uh, our experience on board uh, Dragon was just really exciting for us. Uh, both uh, the fueling event before we lifted off, it was uh, different than the space shuttle, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more exciting for us, uh, probably a little bit, just a little bit at least, because it was the first time anyone had done that. Uh, we then launched into into space on board the Falcon 9, and uh, the ride, I'll say, was a little bit smoother than our shuttle experience. The shuttle was a little bit rougher, at least at the beginning. Uh, later in the flight, uh, it did uh, wake us up a little bit, though, as we uh, continued all the way into low Earth orbit. Just uh, really exciting for both of us. Uh, I know we were smiling and talking through the th entire uh, way uphill, so it was uh, just a lot of fun for us. That's great. And just for our viewers, given the fact that we do have a little bit of a delay, keep in mind this is a live interview. It's taking place with the International Space Station, which is 250 miles above Earth. Expedition, Expedition 63 ISS Commander Chris Cassidy, Flight Engineers Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley are with us this morning. Guys, major moment in history. What does this mean for each of you? Well, I think for me personally, it's uh, it's a great way to uh, fly your third time in space uh, after nine year wait uh, to fly previously uh, on the last shuttle flight. So this is a good way to kind of bookend it uh, from a career standpoint and uh, to fly with two close friends and uh, get to spend some time on the space station is just a uh, it's a real icing on the cake for me. Great. Bob and Doug, you worked closely with SpaceX on design and development of Crew Dragon. You named it Endeavor on this trip as well. What was the process of that design and development like, and how involved was Elon Musk? Well, for both Doug and I, we did spend quite a bit of time working directly with the team out in Hawthorne. Uh, we've, of course, visited uh, most of SpaceX's facilities around the country at uh, McGregor, Texas, and then down at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, our experience was was pretty uh, extensive. We were able to get to all the facilities, interface with all the different aspects of the vehicle. I think Doug and I went something like uh, 32 consecutive weeks with uh, travel out to California to work directly with that team face to face. Uh, it really just does help to be able to see each other. Uh, managing that through the pandemic that we faced was a bit of a challenge, but one that we overcame and the SpaceX team did a wonderful job with uh, facilitating that, providing a, a clean environment and, and ensuring that we didn't get exposed to anything that might uh, potentially impact hardware production or, of course, a, a launch delay. I do know that uh, Elon was uh, involved in quite a bit of the uh, development uh, process. I know that many of the topics that we would discuss would then be percolated up through the organization, and he would give the uh, final approval on, on many of the aspects of things that uh, we were we were trying to get developed. And so uh, definitely a huge team that uh, pulled together, and, and SpaceX just did a wonderful job with uh, allowing us to be a part of that innovative process. And Chris, I'll put this question to you as we usher in this new era of, of human spaceflight. How close are we really to this commercialized space reality or the so-called colonization of space? How do you see it? Well, I, I see that the, this, uh, the, the space station eventually will, will no longer be operated by the government. I, I, I'm not enti entirely privy to all the details, but there, there's plans for after uh, the government is done with the space station. Perhaps we turn that over to operating from a commercial entity or add additional modules that commercial entities uh, provide. And, and we are really close. Technically, that's not a leap far at all. It's just a matter of getting the will, getting the, um, 
the demand and uh, and and we can make it happen and, and that's super exciting because there's so much capability that's offered here on the space station but ultimately uh, our destination as, as space travelers is Mars with a stop at the moon and uh, and the International Space Station gives us that core that bedrock of knowledge that we have to really fine-tune all of the technical things we need to do to accomplish those two larger uh, long-term goals